delighted to be here tonight to talk about my Johnson Farm uh, visual journal project. I'm one of those old-fashioned people called a painter. You might remember us. Um, and I started out my project loading my painting in the car and then breaking it to my dogs. They weren't coming with me. <clears throat> so this is my, my gear loaded for the two-hour drive from my home um, up to the Johnson Farm. The Johnson Farm is a daunting piece of land. Uh, it's about 800 acres on, um, up by Canada and New Hampshire. And I just started out in my sketchbook walking the land, trying to figure out what was there and where I was going to paint and just kind of get my head around how I was going to approach um, saying something about this land. It's, uh, I first thought um, that I would deal with the agricultural land, the cornfields, the hayfields, because that's what I'm often interested in painting. And then I discovered the wetlands. There are 300 acres of wetlands that were conserved uh, by the farmer and the Vermont Land Trust. And what I became interested in was the relationship between the working landscape, the kind of geometry of that landscape, with the kind of richness of the forms of the, um, of the uh, wetlands. And I decided that I would really do studies, um, that I would do go back over and over again through the year and do paintings that showed the changing seasons and that also allowed me to really get to know the land intimately. So I ended up doing 35 12 by 12 inch paintings that I hung in a grid here at the museum. Um, color uh, is very important to me. Um, I, I love exploring color. And um, what I saw in these, uh, this landscape was the chance to really interpret color through the year and through the seasons. Um, and, and again, really examine how the landscape that we, we uh, manipulate is so different from the natural landscape, the kind of geometry of this cornfield versus the diversity of forms that you get in the wetlands. Um, so this was me just standing um, session after session. A plein air painting takes about four hours to do because the light changes, so you're working within that window. Um, and I'd find I often uh, would just drive down a farm track, I was kind of out in the middle of nowhere, um, and, and set up at the edge of the wetland which gave me a chance to uh, really look at color more than anything, how the color changed through the seasons. Something like this bush where I would see it you know, transform four times um, in the year. Also looking at the difference of the color, say, within that corn, that kind of almost artificial green in the corn versus the variety of greens that I was seeing in, in the, in the um, wetlands. Looking at the land change again in the late summer, um, subtle changes that I wouldn't have seen if I hadn't gone, gone out there month after month when the wildflowers came in, the Joe Pye weed and the, the goldenrod, and looking at the silver maples um, transition in, into orange. Um, <clears throat> and uh, also in the winter, I, my dogs did get a chance um, to go. La a lab and wetland is not that great a combination, so I really couldn't take them that much. Uh, but the winter was a real revelation. Um, too cold to paint outside, and I didn't want to work on site. But just to see again um, that kind of uh, complexity um, I saw in the, in the wetland areas in form. The spring was my favorite time. I thought of it as sort of the wind in the willows time, you know, where the land woke up, um, the, the land flooded, so the cropland really became wetland, which was kind of thrilling, watching the migrating birds coming in and seeing that color shift again to color I just hadn't seen, seen before. <clears throat> um, a lot of red, um, a lot of red um, that I wasn't expecting. Um, also, the Connecticut River forming a kind of backdrop um, was, was, really, was really a gift to spend that much time along the river, uh, standing in a patch of, of osier dogwood, just looking at, at how um, unexpected the color was at that time of the year. The other thing about spring is mosquitoes. Um, I, I had to improvise. They really, um, really can torture you when you're standing out there with them. Uh, so I, I did uh, figure out a way to combat them effectively enough. Um, but that is plein air painting. It's not for, um, it's not for sissies, let me, let me say that. <laughs> uh, green, green will defeat you if you are painting in Vermont. And what, uh, what I have found, um, is that there's a lot less green than you would think out there when you really look. Even this kind of spring green, I found I was all around the color wheel, you know, from yellow to purple, um, trying to interpret. So, um, you know, when I started out, I asked myself, what, what am I doing here? I mean, that's something artists often ask themselves. What the hell am I doing here? Standing, you know, hour after hour out in the middle of nowhere. 
what am I going to bring that I can communicate to people? And what, what I ended up feeling was that one thing that, that artists can do is to be patient, you know, to pay attention, to take that. I mean, we're actually, I mean, our job is to look at things that most people don't bother to look at. And my hope was that somehow by putting, putting in that time and, and in a sense collaborating with the land, because when you paint, what you're painting talks to you as well as you putting something down. I had two big discoveries that came out of this year working on the Johnson Farm. One that I really like standing by myself out in the middle of nowhere. I had been a little worried, you know, going in the, in, you know, two miles down a farm track. I found I love that sense of just blending into the landscape. I also developed this great respect and appreciation for wetland. Wetland is wasteland to a lot of people. Farmers tend to to, to ditch it and, and make it workable land. And it deserves the right to be um, it for, it, for itself. It's a very, very rich place to spend any time in. I, I, I would be in a cornfield and I looked down and one square yard of cornfield if the farmer was doing a good job was corn and soil. A square yard of wetland is just holds a multiplicity of life, of sound, of smells. And, uh, it was really a thrill for me to be able to, to, to build a little bit of that relationship and come to that understanding. So I'm just very, very grateful um, to the farmer who, who felt these were not wastelands, who, who conserved them to the land trust, a wonderful organization, and to um, the project that gave me really the privilege of spending that year. I feel like a Peace Corps volunteer who goes somewhere and comes back. I don't know what I did for that place, but it did, it did everything for me. Thank you. Thank you.